Hey there, I'm E.B. and I'm the Education and Outreach Assistant at Green Mountain Conservation Group. And for our virtual Earth Day celebration, I'm going to be reading you a story. This is called One Plastic Bag, Isatu Sise and the Recycling Women of the Gambia. And I'm reading this story because our theme for Earth Day this year is plastic to go along with our less plastic challenge. So let's get into the story. This was written by Miranda Paul and illustrated by Elizabeth Zunon. Njao Gambia. Isitu walks with her chin frozen. Fat raindrops pelt her bare arms. Her face hides in the shadow of a palm leaf basket. And her neck stings with every step. Warm scents of burning wood and bubbling peanut stew drift past. Her village is close now. She lifts her nose to catch the smell. You can see her walking with her basket there. The basket tips, one fruit tumbles, then two, then ten. The basket breaks. Isatu kicks the dirt. She looks a bit frustrated that her baskets broke. Something silky dances past her eyes, softening her anger. It moves like a flag flapping in the wind and settles under a tamarind tree. Isatu slides the strange fabric through her fingers and discovers it can carry things inside. She gathers her fruits in the bag. So it looks like she found another material. The basket is useless now. She drops it, knowing it will crumble and mix back in with the dirt. So this bag will break down, but does plastic do that? Four goats greet Isatu as Grandmother Mombe emerges from her kitchen hut. Hurry in before the rain soaks your beautiful mbuba. Seems like the mbuba is something she's wearing. Isatu scurries in and Grandmother serves spicy rice and fish. Rain drums on the creaking aluminum roof. I broke your basket, Isatu confesses, but I found this. Plastic, Grandmother frowns. There's more in the city. So it looks like the plastic is becoming pretty regular in the city, but isn't in the country where she is. Day after day, Isatu watches neighbors tote their things in bright blue or black plastic bags. Children slurp water from and wanjo from tiny holes poked in clear bags. Market trays fill with minties wrapped in rainbows of plastic. The colors are beautiful, she thinks. She swings her bag high. The handle breaks. One paper escapes, then two, then ten. So plastic is becoming more common in this village, but it might not be the best material. Isatu shakes sand off her papers. Another plastic bag floats by and she tucks her things inside. The torn bag is useless now. She drops it to the dirt, as everyone does. There's nowhere else to put it. When we throw things away, they don't really go away either. Day after day, the bag she dropped is still there. One plastic bag becomes two, then 10 then a hundred. Plastic isn't beautiful anymore, she thinks. Her feet step down a cleaner path and the thought floats away. Years pass and Isatu grows into a woman. She barely notices the ugliness growing around her until the ugliness finds its way to her. Isatu hears a goat crying and hurries towards grandmother's house. Why is it tied up? Where are the other goats? Inside, the butcher is speaking in a low voice. Many goats have been eating these, he says. The bags twist around their insides and the animals cannot survive. Now three of your goats and so many other goats in the village have died. Grandmother Mbombe's powerful shoulders sag. Isatu must be strong and do something, but what? So they're just down to one goat left because the goats have been eating all this plastic and it's been getting stuck inside them. Isatu's feet lead her to the old ugly road. 
A pile of garbage stands as wide as grandmother's cooking hut. Mosquitoes swarm near dirty pools of water alongside the pile. Smoke from burning plastic stings her nose. Her feet back away. This doesn't sound like a mess that anyone wants to have to deal with. Goats scamper past. They forage through the trash for food. Her feet stop. She knows too much to ignore it now. Holding her breath, she plucks one plastic bag from the pile, then two, then 10, then a 100. What can we do? Isatu asks her friends. Let's wash them, says Fatim, pulling out Omo soap. Maram grabs a bucket and Incha fetches water from the well. Peggy finds clothespins and they clip the washed bags on the line. As the bags dry, Isachi watches her sister crochet. Can you teach me? Wow, yes. Her sister shows Isatu the stitches, then hands her a metal tool. Isatu's fingers busy themselves in, out, around. Jerojef, thank you. So it looks like they're going to turn the plastic into something else. Isatu finds a broomstick and carves her own tool from its wood. What's that for? Fatim asks. Isatu pauses. She and Peggy have an idea. But will their friends think it's crazy? Will the idea even work? Nervously, she explains the plan. One friend agrees to help, then two, then five. The women cut bags into strips and roll them into spools of plastic thread. Before long, they teach themselves how to crochet with this thread. Naka Ligebi asks grandmother, how is the work? Nanka, Nanka, answers Isa too, slow. Some people in the village laugh at us, others call us dirty. But I believe what we are doing is good. The women crochet by candlelight away from those who mock them. So you can see them crocheting with all of this plastic thread that they've created out of the old bags until a morning comes when they will no longer work in secret. Fingers sore and blistered, Isatu hauls the recycled purses to the city. One person laughs at her, then two, then 10, then... One woman lays Delassi coins on the table. She chooses a purse and shows it to one friend then two, then ten. Soon, everyone wants one. Isatu fills her own purse with Delassi. She zips it shut and rides home to tell grandmother she has made enough to buy a new goat. When she passes by the pile of rubbish, she smiles because it's smaller now. She tells herself, one day it will be gone and my home will be beautiful. And one day, it was. And that's the end of this story. So this is a pretty incredible story of how these women were able to take these plastic bags, all this trash, and turn it into something else that was usable and something that they could sell. But something that's even more important to think about is not using plastic in the first place. Plastic takes 500 years to break down when often we use something for less than 10 minutes. Saying no to plastic in the first place will help make sure that we don't have to find solutions to these problems. I hope you enjoyed the story and dig into the rest of our Earth Day content. Happy Earth Day.